Welcome. This is Michael Kornbluth, your host for the Do It All Dad Year podcast. This is episode eight, Best of Matilda. She's my firstborn, my original pride and joy before my boys, her two brothers were born, Archo USA and Headbangers Ball, otherwise known as Samuel Teddy Kornbluth. This morning, and this is my same routine every morning, and that routine is waiting for the bus to pick up my daughter. She's in first grade now, and it's a great opportunity to bond and to squeeze in a story, some calf raises, uh, and really uh, for daddy to sample some new material on her. And this morning, uh, we had this really special moment. And something that, I, something that I said that I thought was semi-profound, and I thought it was appropriate uh, to share with all of you. So I'm talking to my daughter, and this is what I had to say. I said, Matilda, Grandma and Grandpa, who don't see you nearly enough, miss out on the best of, the best of you. She was touched. So as a result, we are dedicating episode 8 to wonderful Matilda. Best of Matilda. That phone ringing most likely was my annoying mother completely disrupting my flow. So uh, while well, I'm talking about my mother, uh, I'll never forget during the original Woman's March, she, uh, she sent me uh, this text where she asked if, uh, if Matilda had watched the Woman's March. And I'm thinking to myself, no mom, Matilda's six, so for now, cockblock parties aren't her cup of tea. Did I have her watch the Woman's March? Yeah, mom, in a burka. So Matilda could see that she's got nothing to bitch about. Did I have her watch the March? And then, of course, there, there was the... I mean, mom, do people recall the signs of that original March? Of course you do. The pussy hats, all the signs. My mom's asking me if my daughter would watch the march, and I'm thinking to myself, Mom, my daughter is finally learning how to read. The last thing I need in my life is my daughter staring at the TV and end up saying, Pussy Power? Daddy, what's that? Is that a new show on Amazon Prime? And then, like 400 days later, there's the other Women's March on Washington. And my only thought when I, well, I had two thoughts when I saw the pictures of the New York Post uh, the next day. My first thought was, there's a whole lot of Rosie sporting a whole lot of chins. So that's number one. And number two, my second thought was, talk about spreading your pussycat supply then. It's the beauty of your podcast. I can say the word pussy. So I want to share some of my daughter's greatest moments with me that I've been able to experience here on the stay-at-home dad front in my attempt to relaunch my writing slash comedy career. And we're going to let it rip. Uh, this one is one of my personal favorites. It was a snow day, waiting for the train, and it was delayed a little bit. And, you know, we live here in Croton Falls, trains right across the street. We're going to go to Pleasantville, not too far. Uh, it's right past uh, Chappaqua. Uh, of course, that's uh, Hillary Hammer Time Cankles country. I do have a, a great video with my younger son, Archo USA, yelling at Uranium One at the top of his lungs. Again, something to check out on YouTube. But anyway, back to Matilda. This is the best of Matilda episode. So, waiting for the train. Train's taking forever. And then my daughter says, Daddy, what's taking so long? What is this, the sloth train? I told you it was worth the wait. So, I had this other great moment with my daughter. It wasn't too long ago. We're downstairs in our new home in Curtin Falls. And we had one of these like amazing hugs. I don't know what the reason was for the hug, but uh, it was a spontaneous hug. And it was a long-lasting one. It wasn't like a two-second hug where sometimes my daughter hugs me. And all of a sudden she starts like yanking at the neck. And 
perhaps I'm in the middle of like writing a joke and I'll push her off and I'll say Matilda to like give me some space. But this was a mutually received beautiful hug and I felt love pour from every uh, neuron uh, in her body. Uh, and again, the feeling was reciprocal. And she said this line afterwards. It felt like an eternity and I didn't mind at all. Uh, I wasn't restless. The other time where I really wasn't restless at all was when I was uh, snorkeling in the Great Barrier Reef for my honeymoon with my wife. It felt like that. So anyway, so at the end, my daughter says, Daddy, as we're hugging, I never want this moment to end. I thought that was really beautiful. So that definitely had to be included in the Best of Matilda episode, for sure. Another uh, great moment, uh, this is a little bit dark, but you know, I had a, a fight with my brother. He had gotten arrested. Uh, actually, no, this before that. So I actually had a weekend free, which I never do, uh, with the two kids back then. We live in Pleasantville. We were renting. And my brother visited. And he said, bro, you know, I'm drinking. I'm out of control. And I'm like, okay, all right. And, you know, he was still having fun with the nose candy. And he says, can I bring a girl back to, to your place later? Some girl I met on Tinder. I said, no way. Not going to happen. And then he ends up disrespecting my authority, as usual. This is what happens when your younger brother not only uh, hits puberty before you do, but uh, loses his virginity too, which is a double whammy of shame, which makes you feel like a real big brother bust of sorts. The, uh, she, he proceeded to bang the three hottest girls in his class that I tried to jerk off to at the time, but couldn't. The, uh, but the point being is, so we end up leaving, he ends up leaving a used condom on a couch in my office where the kids play, obviously. And thank God I discovered it before um, my kids did. The, uh, I mean, not that it would have been the complete end of the world, but still pretty blatant, disrespectful behavior. Of course, my parents, you know, sided with him and, you know, never really uh, admonished him for it. But, you know, that's that's nothing new. So, so anyway, the point being is at this point, I'm obviously very mad at Uncle John. Never felt that he apologized or acknowledged any sort of wrongdoing. And my daughter, we're hanging out, as usual, because this is who I hang out with. <laughs> Grandparents are in Delaware and Arizona! So, and I haven't bring home the bacon, and my wife uh, works nights, so, you know, this is who I hang out with. Not complaining. Trust me. My kids really are superior company the most. Do I miss hanging out with some old buds? Yes. But again, not complaining. So, we're hanging out, and she says, Daddy, if... Uncle John doesn't attend your funeral, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> that sounds dramatic enough for you? So, true moment. That actually happened. So, it's good to know that my daughter's got my back. The uh, I'm not saying Uncle John won't show up to my funeral. And it's not as if this is... Uh, I'm trying to write a, a screenplay right now for a tier, for the male version of Tears of Endearment. The, uh, I'm in good health for now. Thank God. So... That was a crazy moment. And at this point, she was, what, four? I mean, how crazy is that? Who says it when she's four? So, and then also, <laughs> around that time, this is great. So, we got her this Disney, like, ukulele guitar. And she steps on it. And I said, Matilda, you don't step on the guitar. Show some respect to the guitar. You don't step on the guitar. And then without missing a beat, my daughter says, but Jimmy played with his teeth? Her musical knowledge is unbelievable. I mean, literally at five, I could say, Matilda, what type of music is playing? She could say jazz, hip-hop, or she could specify uh, Joan Jett or Green Day. Again, the benefit of, you know, being a stay-at-home dad, being able to give her a nice, uh, well-broad rock and roll education, uh, which is a beautiful thing. I took her to Further, through the new version of The Grateful Dead. After her second birthday, it was in Bethel Woods, so it's literally after her second birthday. And we're in the parking lot. And she points to this like dinged up hippie inhaling a night, sucking down a nitrous balloon. And she points to the hippie sucking down the nitrous balloon. And she says, birthday? And I said, no, burnout day. And then 
halfway into the concert, they play Eyes of the World. And she got into this, like, synchronized dance where she was, like, channeling the spirit of, like, Donna of old. Although there are a lot of hardcore or uh, Grateful Dead heads that were not necessarily huge Donna fans. But, you know, she was, like, a backup singer in the band during, like, their heyday in the 70s. So that was the reference in case that didn't make any sense to you. But she was freaking everyone out because she was so into the music. And now I call her Singing Russ because uh, just everything she does is so musical. That's why I think she'd be a great, you know, comedian. Uh, she could be the, the female uh, Weird Al Yankovic because everything she says is, uh, is so damn lyrical. It's unbelievable. So, uh, let's see. What else do I want to talk about? Oh. So, one time, my dad is visiting for her birthday, and he wouldn't take off his shoes. It's always been a major issue. He always cites his grandfather, his grandfather's father, saying, well, that's what Gentiles do, or you were superstitious. But for me, I just think he's in insisted on being a dick and doesn't like to respect my authority uh, at all. So, Matilda goes, Daddy, why doesn't Papa take off his shoes? And I said, I don't know, getting him slippers for Han, like I could could soften his stance. So these are my daughter's new uh, play wrestling catchphrases emerged from increased tussle time with her younger brother, Archer USA. Watch and learn. I'll sit on you. Doesn't hurt a bit. I told you. She's got the gift of gab. So this morning, I'm talking to my daughter. I always try to discuss current events, make sure that I'm not the total delusional uh, paranoid Jew uh, that my wife likes to make fun of me being the majority of the time. But my, my, my wife's a lot to make fun. So I said, Matilda, uh, I was just reading the story, and there is a 22-year-old Canadian internet personality who claimed Allah is gay, and now she's banned from England forever. And my daughter says, Daddy, I don't think God is gay, or else he wouldn't have created you or me. And I said, don't forget to mention Jane Mansfield, Succulent Mounds of Desire. <laughs> I love that joke. So this is my impersonation of my daughter as our next Miss America. Put your hands together for your next Miss America. But Trump, keep your hands up high where I can see them. So the most intense, deep question my daughter has asked during her pre-K years, was this. Daddy, if God created the universe, then who created God? Eventually, I come up with, God went back in time in a time machine made by Elon Musk. And my daughter says, real convincing, Dad. Thanks for making me an atheist at four. One time, my daughter asked me, uh, what's a mentor, Daddy? What's a mentor? And I said, are you reading blogs on LinkedIn Pulse already? What's a mentor? A mentor is someone that points out your flaws so you can become the best version of you. And she says, does that mean Mommy's your mentor? And I said, why is that? She said, because Mommy's always pointing out your flaws. How so? Well, she's always talking about, you know, how, how loud you are and annoying and, and selfish. I got it, kid. I got it. I, I don't need another mini mommy clone of my life right now. Thank you very much. I used to do this bit with my daughter when she was two, when she couldn't really string more than uh, three words together at a time. But it always destroyed. We go to a deli. I've always been a dire Nick fan. And... They're my first love. Uh, I like to describe my relationship to the Knicks as a forced marriage that my dad or, that my dad pushed on me, but I'll never have a ring to show for it. So anyway, so we go to a deli. And I'd say, I'd be with my daughter. I say, so Matilda, what did Tyson Chandler give the Knicks? And she'd say, Bupkis, Daddy, Bupkis. Still works. This is an old joke. So. It was a weekend. I was working at Robert Half, and 
I had taken a one hitter of ganj in the bathroom. You know, wife was home. At this point, it was just uh, Matilda. Uh, we hadn't had the, the other two. And I felt it was earned. Not that big of a deal. It's not like we were going anywhere. And my wife uh, smelled in the bathroom. And she got all disgusted. And she screamed at the top of her lungs. Ugh, you're such a stoner. And then, and slams the door. And then my daughter says, Daddy's not a stoner. He's a rock star. I said, that's right, Matilda. Because stoners aren't doers. And Daddy's a doer. Of course, that doesn't include Mommy anymore, since you turned our bed into a 24-7 open milk bar. But that's besides the point. So, I, uh, on, a, on a different note here, I, uh, I don't agree with his politics. But God bless Judd Apatow for making a, a documentary to honor his dear friend and mentor, the great Gary Shandling. Larry Sanders is by far the greatest comedy TV show HBO ever made. Thanks to Larry the Legend. Not from French Lick. So this is a, a new Barbie pitch for my daughter. She has a gazillion. I said, hey Matilda, how would you feel if Daddy... Assuming that you clean up your room right now and you're fuss free about it, how would you feel if Daddy got you the new Mindy Kaling Barbie doll? And she says, who the hell is Mindy Kaling? And I said, think of Jasmine from Aladdin reincarnated as a klutzy comedy nerd. So we're um, with my daughter, Rhonda Deegan, and I point out uh, the New Yankee Stadium. I said, hey, Matilda, look, the New Yankee Stadium. The house that gentrification built. She says, what's gentrification, Daddy? And I said, liberal talk for less colored. During the playoffs this past year, you know, the games were on light. Uh, I'm not a, a complete degenerate as a, as a parent. Kids now go to bed at a reasonable hour. And the next morning, I was all excited. I said, Matilda, the Yankees won. And she says, I heard. You must be why the Big Apple never sleeps. So my mom, uh, Miss Annoying, so she recently sent me a text, because we're not really on speaking terms these days. She says, uh, do Arthur and Matilda have any ideas for signs to use at the March for Life? And of course I wanted to say, Mom, my kids aren't CNN props. You're such a, oh God, you're such a condescending C-word sometimes. You know, like Hillary on shittier Chardonnay. So at this point, it's official. My daughter is really into men. Like, for example, we're watching Overboard with Kurt Russell. And my daughter Matilda starts running her fingers through my hair, trying to grab my chosen curls, which no longer exist. <laughs> so and another uh, great memory that I have here uh, with uh, Matilda is, you know, her performing... In the Little Mermaid. I'm still pissed that she wasn't able to get like a bigger part. But she's the youngest one in the production. And we almost didn't get her enrolled in camp for it. And my, my, my wife gave me some resistance at first. She goes, Michael, how can we send our daughter to acting camp? She can't even read. And I said, we'll watch Rocky Two for pointers. But she did great. And I talked before about, you know, the grandparents missing the best of, and I will give credit where credit's due. You know, my in-laws came up for it, and that means a lot. I'm pretty sure they saw a couple of performances, and I remember uh, crying, shedding tears of joy after the second one. I was front row, and I was with my two sons, because I saw the progression. I saw how much braver she was, and it made me so happy, you know, to see my daughter uh, be a, so alive and and fearless. Because that's been my ultimate goal. You know, that's the reason why I haven't been able to give up stand-up altogether. You know, I had this writing goal, wrote for VH1 Classic, but the goal was really to get a staff writing job for like Family Guy or something like that. And, you know, I'm in New York right now, so like that's not going to happen. All this stuff's in California. I'm not trying to sound like a cop-out. But... 
you know, I've had these like close calls. I wrote this Louis script and I sent it to Nick DiPaolo and he read it and he was very complimentary. It's called Patrice Appreciation Day. It was dedicated to Patrice O'Neill. I have a character that is a mini love interest of one of Louis's daughters and Louis convinced that that love interest is called Little Patrice is possessed by the spirit of Patrice during like that time period, that 30 day time period before he goes to heaven. And it's a real heartfelt like tribute. And I'm able to pay homage to the old tough crowd crew and being able to write for Voss and, and Quinn was great. That's always been a strength point, a strong point for me, being able to write for other people's voices. So anyway, and then I ended up writing a pilot for Nick DiPaolo and Bobby Slayton called Mr. Wright. Nick thought it was okay, that's fine. And then I wrote this this pilot, and I sent it to Amazon. They didn't buy it, but uh, Margaret Cho read it, and it was called Mike Mates, about the most followed Black Republican on Twitter, called Two Honest Save, and it was actually based on uh, someone from my family. It's, it's my great 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 grandfather. His name's Austin Goller. Boy, he friends Abraham Lincoln, saved them from drowning. True story. So for the longest time, I would do something funny with that, and I took my swing at it in Mike Mates because I have two two on his A, be a descendant of Austin. I make him a biracial character. And Margaret Cho read it. And you want your great compliment? If you want to encourage one of your friends that has comedic aspirations, if it's funny, please mention funny in the compliments. She reads my entire script. And I get a direct message from Margaret Cho that says, so funny. Definitely one of the heavy metal highs of my life. That was a beautiful moment. And then, of course, I ruined this momentum because it turns out she actually, there's another Josh, there's a Josh Cornbluth out there. And she confused me for him. And I said, I hate that Josh Cornbluth. He's a total Google hog. I can't Google my name without his fat face filling up the first five pages of Google. Which is why now my showbiz name, the reason why, is Michael Cornbluth. Yeah, <laughs> just to clarify in case I've confused and lost my remaining audience at this stage. So uh, this is another beautiful moment. This is more of a me moment, but Matilda inspired it. When I was working with Robert Half, I got this great book called The Book of Bad Manners, and it highlights all these bad manners, you know, such as. Like the, the, they have one for like being a fart fluffer and a toy hog. So I'm like, you know what? I'll make up one for the class. I'll be eccentric. Uh, show off my comedic chops. This is what I came up with. It's a great moment. The hair puller. It's on Guest Reader Day. And I said, this is the hair puller. Don't turn your back on him or he'll pull your hair. But Matilda still pinned her baby brother down. And beat him in the wrestling match. Fair and square. Afterwards, I got rave reviews from the teacher. She said I should be hosting my own children's show. Miss Farney. The, uh, she's fantastic. The, uh, I'm so lucky that my, my daughter has her as a teacher. By the way, something to look forward to for all you aspiring do-it-all dads. When you have a great kid that you've take, taken an active time developing... Making sure, making sure she doesn't make the same mistake you make. And ensuring that she's like sweet and attentive and respectful. And when you get those reviews early on from your teacher where they have nothing remotely negative to say, it's a beautiful thing and a nice reflection upon yourself. So pat yourself on the shoulder for dads that have received that incredible uh, honor of distinction because it's a great moment to behold. And do it all dads play a huge factor in those brave reviews materializing. So this really pissed me off recently. I, I shouldn't be ending on a negative note here, but my daughter's on the phone with my mother, and she says, Mimi, my mom calls herself Mimi, you know, me, like me. Sound more like a self-centered narcissist. Anyway, so she's on the phone with my mom, and she says, Mimi, can you get a scholarship for art? And my mom... I'm not listening to the phone. And then all of a sudden, I hear my daughter says, but I'm great at art. <laughs> so after the conversation, I said, so Matilda, so when you asked Mimi if you get a scholarship in art, did she, did you send some resistance? 
did she tell you too ambitious or there's lots of competition? She's like, yeah. She's like, how can you tell, Daddy? And I said, because I heard you get defensive. Welcome to my world, kid. <laughs> they do grow up fast. Like, that's one word of wisdom. I don't want to call it a word of wisdom, but that is one truism that my parents did utter, my father uttered after after my daughter was born. I, I don't believe my daughter is, is already seven. I don't call her eight for two for nothing. I call it eight for two because her legs going for miles and miles. I was playing a game of two against one last night. It was her brother and sister versus me. I play on my knees. We play in the Nerf hoop. It was a little physical, and she's so strong. The uh, it's it, it's a thing to behold. Especially when she dunks two balls at the same time. That's great. I wanted to go first too, so God does answer answer your prayers. And. Of course, prior to playing basketball, she was prancing around naked, and now it just gets very uncomfortable. I said, Matilda, put some monies on so the Chinese on the world has far less to say. So, Matilda Rose Cornbluth, I love you with all my hard times infinity. You're the best comedy mate I never had. You believe in daddy. You compliment, you give the best compliments. She's called me a comedy king before. I mean, she does see me kill pretty consistently outside of the deli and the gas station. Every public forum except an actual stage. God forbid I make that happen. But she does give me a desire to get into Macho Comedy Festival and have that be a concrete goal to go after. Ideally, this podcast will be a great platform to, to give me momentum to get there. But Matilda Rose Cornbluth, you far exceeded any concept of how much pure joy another human being could give me outside of fall in love with mama. <laughs> I love everything you are and everything that you're going to become. Do it all, Daddy, your podcast. Dad friendly entertainment for you and me. Working remote on a self employed basis can make our kids great again. Talk to you soon.